Yes, Gemini, sometimes the subtle energies that we are not really perceiving are the ones that can undermine us. And that happens when we're too preoccupied with our conscious minds and really forget about what's going on uh, deep within. And I say that because you have this month, October 2013, which is the uh, synopsis for your horoscope right now, if you're born in, uh, under the sign of the twins, Venus, Saturn, the dragon or north, karmic node, and Mercury all in the sixth house of work. And um, this, this is an excess of energy in that area. However, we do see some favorable relationship from Jupiter and Neptune indicating that if you're spiritually aware, then you can use these energies and give them an upward turn rather than them undermining you. And, you know, this is this is the water sign of Scorpio for you. So it could be a month where you're very, very intense about things. And with Neptune involved in this, maybe your ideals are running away with you. You need to be practical about what you can achieve. And this is happening for a long time, not just this month, because I, I've mentioned also in the past, over the last few readings, that Neptune in the upper part of your horoscope for the next few years is going to definitely uh, make a big impact on your professional life. So right now, um, it's important to work smart, not just hard. We also see that your mind is uh, fully activated. I mean, it's fully activated at the best of times, Gemini, being an air sign and showing your intellectual uh, qualities. You have the Moon and Mars, what we call Chandra Mangala Yoga, or the configuration of Moon and Mars in your third house, which is more the conscious mind. Sun in the fifth house, which is the creative mind. And of course, the ninth house of the horoscope, in your case, is ruled by Uranus in the eleventh house just now. That is what we call the higher mind or the philosophical mind. So a lot of energy going on there, especially we see the, the opposition from the sun to Uranus in the first part of the month that's building up over the first three or four days. <clears throat> so this has to do with your love affairs and friendships, maybe some uh, argumentation or disagreement, <coughs> debate over style or over philosophy. Um, it's important for you to not be uh, too judgmental about others. It shows here that you've got very, very strong ideals, as I said. Let's extend that to your, not just your work, but to some other aspects of your life, your philosophical views, your social views, uh, political views, that sort of thing. At times you need to maybe keep some of this uh, to yourself. Now, if we move into the um, uh, transits a little more deeply, we see here the very, very focused uh, transit of Mercury conjoining Saturn on the ninth. That's the one I'm talking about that has a lot to do with... Um, becoming, I suppose, perfected in your style of work and your methodologies. That's going to be very important uh, this month for you. Um, but we can't, we can't sidestep that eclipse that's happening on the 19th in your 11th house of friendship. And that's going to be very important for you to really uh, manage your opinions with those of others. I think you can do it. You've got some nice aspects there at the same time. Leading up to that 19th, we see Venus in uh, a triangular aspect to Uranus. Again, it's coming from the 7th house to the 11th house. These directions of your horoscope have to do with you know, public relations, friendship, your, your usual clique of friends. And you've also got, don't forget, that sun in the 5th house uh, in trying to your natal sun, uh, right angle to Jupiter. That's more of a financial aspect. Don't gamble on the 13th. But that's showing that you do have the creative nous to deal with some of these issues in a very, very interesting way that might actually even win over some enemies or adversaries just now. We see Mars in the opposition to Neptune. That happens on the 20th. And uh, that, you know, four t what we call the 410 axis. The fourth is your domestic sphere. It's also your inner happiness opposing Neptune in the 10th house. So... Be very, very careful that in this uh, in this period of your life, you're not working in something just for the sake of proving something to others. Uh, I see there that you've got that strong Neptune element that we've talked about, giving you all these ideals, but the actual drive or the physical manifestation of what you're doing is very much opposed to that. These are very different planets. One is all about uh, the gung-ho material achievement of things, whereas the other is the, the silent, 
spiritual Neptunian uh, self-sacrificing principle. Both of these are diametrically opposed and it's important to find balance uh, with these two principles in your life just now. That's even more important because what I'm seeing here is that transit of the sun to your sixth house on the 23rd. <clears throat> that's a one-month transit. And that's got to do with your health particularly and again your work. We saw how that conjunction of planets there it's focalizing your energy in that area. But it's also got to do with working to pay off your debts, to clear yourself of that tension that could be arising from having too many debts, too much expenditure. And of course, debt is not always financial. This could be debt or a sense of obligation that you have to summon now. So it's best to clear that up. I love that law of power that says, uh, despise the free lunch. Be very, very careful what you accept from people during the last half of the month as you may find yourself <coughs> obligated to them down the track. Uh, a better cycle around the 26th or leading up to it with that 6th house sun uh, in trying to that Neptune in the 10th house, you can actually start to find that balance, I think, around the last few days of the month. Mercury, again, as I said, moving into that very, very uh, powerful conjunction of uh, Saturn, we see that it's been doing a, a bit of retrogression here, backwards and forwards. We see that it uh, uh, moves into its direct motion. Uh, so things can clear up. The communications that you've wanted to have can actually bear some good fruit around that uh, last couple of days of the month. Look forward to your company next month, Gemini. Um, Astrology.com.au uh, offers you a lot of free material there to uh, help you understand yourself. This monthly forecast I've given you is there also in a little bit more detail in textual form along with your daily and yearly readings. Lots of free psychic readings, which I mention to you every month. Please avail yourself of that, and I'll see you here next month. Bye-bye.